The 6 Series convertible is no more, BMW wants to step up the game in luxury and sportiness and move it higher with the all new BMW 8 Series Cabriolet. Does that work? Here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas, we're going to find out together the exterior, interior and the driving experience. As always, in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we see, uh, first of all, very untypical shape of the BMW double kidney. But this is now the signature for the 8 series that they take exactly this form. Also when you look at it from the side, basically it has two dimensions right there. It rather falls forward, very interesting. And it's also adaptive, so it opens when more airflow is needed. Those headlamps, standard LED, optional the laser light with 600 meters high beam range where it is allowed for regulations wise. Also with a daytime running light right there. A really aggressive front for a convertible, but here the Cabriolet and the Coupe, they both share the same front. 4 meters 84, 15 foot 9 or 191 inches is the length of the 8 series Cabriolet and you can see it's really not a short vehicle. It's not a compact sporty cabriolet, although it has a massive power outlet, I can tell you, but we can see it here from the sheer length. But what about this one here? Look at that roof line, how flat it has been integrated into the whole vehicle. It really seems coupe alike. We already have a review of the 8 series coupe, and this one does indeed come close. The convertible is about 125 kilograms heavier due to some strengthening in the chassis right here around because you know you obviously miss the stiffness here from the fixed roof but due to those additional measures the convertible is just two percent less stiff from a chassis than the coupe very interesting and of course we want to see how it looks like when it's being opened and you can also do that with the key holding the opening button and there we go it's really very long roof, but for that it goes fairly fast. And there you can see that when it's opened, it's rather about this simple design line that's just going all the way from the front to the back of the car. And I think that also makes this vehicle rather timeless. Wheels come in 19 or 20 inch. Those ones here are the top 20 inch here for the M850i, the top petrol engine so far. Later on there will also be the true M versions for all of the 8 series. But you already got the M badge here for the M performance model. Those rims are really beautiful. <laughs> Don't you think so? Then there's a design line here below the door handle and you can see that just very few gaps they've been using to hide this whole cover. There will be some anti-roll bars that would come up should the car flip over but you know as for the figures that happens just quite rarely and we can also put up the wind deflector right here it's um, you know basically a standard fixed one it's not retractable you have to get it in and out manually yes you will see thomas in the work up <laughs> work out there very soon so here we go then with the open top and interesting thing is that here we can even close that while holding the key at least when I'm standing close to it. That of course always, you know, watch out for <laughs> no one interfering right there. So pretty fast, 
mechanism also works up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour while driving. That's the charm of soft tops. Visually, the 8 Series convertible really represents a very significant stance on the road. Look at this horizontal stress everywhere, tail lamps, also the rear top end. And then you have those overhangs here, but they are not real air outtakes. This is just beauty. The same also goes for the outside exhaust tips. The real exhaust is then on the inside. But there's also a lot to say on the technology side. For example, you have a rear axle steering that goes three degrees, either a, you know, in a different direction than the front wheels when you're driving slowly below 60 kilometers an hour, or when you're going faster than 60 kilometers an hour, it goes three up to three degrees in the same direction than the front wheels, then giving you more stability. Optional for the petrol engines, you can also get an anti-tilt function. This one then, you know, is reducing the body roll, especially in, in fast corners. And this one here also always comes with a rear differential lock because the all-wheel drive will still put a lot of torque on the rear axle right there. And therefore, you need that rear differential lock if you want to you know, accelerate out of corners very fastly. So a lot there is also under the hood that is, you know, should be mentioned. We'll experience that one very soon when we drive the vehicle. Let us lift this massive hood and see what's powering this thing. This one here is the M850i, a 4.4 liter V8 turbo with 530 horsepower, acceleration to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour is 3.9 seconds, 0.1 seconds slower than the two-door coupe. Well, I think you can surely live with that. There will later on also be a 3 liter inline 6 petrol engine with a 340 horsepower. This one will be rear wheel driven only, the entry engine so to say. And then there's also an all wheel drive diesel, also 3 liter inline 6, then with 320 horsepower, 5 seconds as the acceleration figure. Well, and they have all in common that they have an adaptive M suspension that's just adaptive dampers, but they are actually very well done. We've experienced them in a couple of different models, but here the interesting thing is there's no air suspension available, optional. Well, you could say that might be a disadvantage, but then again, as there's just one suspension, it makes it a little bit easier for the customer, and also the BMW engineers could concentrate on this very one setup as for the suspension and test the vehicle throughout the testing cycle just with this one suspension. Was that good? We'll find out in the driving part. can get this massive key fob which can also show you some information like the range or you can precondition the car well but there's also a slim one available if you like it as a secondary key with this one or if you don't go for this option i think it says fancy stuff but not really necessary and by the way this car color here by the way is called david gray sounds like a movie star you know i'm david gray you know <laughs> So, keyless entry right here, put your finger right there to close, here to open it. Then, inside of the door, lower part is all bright. I think it's a very interesting mixture. Optional Bowson Wilkins sound system. There are some matte window buttons right there for all four windows. And this one here, the central one, is when you want to put all four windows at the same time. I really like this inside handle here, which the Hofmeister kink is this typical BMW design element. Well, and those massive entry caps right there for the M850i, also signalizing, hey, there's carbon fiber inside this chassis for some weight savings and stiffness at the very same time. 
They also have massively stepped up the build quality. I'll soon show you some examples for that. First of all, those seats here, they have a lot of shoulder support. As you can see, this is a BMW individual trim. Unfortunately, they lack animal friendly alternatives. So far, animal leather only. That's a little bit looking backward. Then this steering wheel is the M steering wheel with a little bit different form at the top part. That's always the case. Also a matter of preference if you like that one or the normal one. And you can already see from the instruments and also the infotainment system, all digital left side 10 point, sorry, left side 12.3 inch and the right side 10.25 inch. Soon more details to that. Well, it's always great to take convertible interior here out there for you. It's all open space. You can see everything at the first glance and very beautiful when some small rays of sunlight have some reflections in there. In this case, with a shiny wood interior, but there are also different woods you can pick from. So, David Gray, let's get inside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a big convertible, so you have this very voluminous seat. It is still a sporty seating position. You sit very low and also a little bit leaning back. So honestly, it's not the most comfortable seating position ever, as you know, I experienced at the, um, at the first glance here. But I'll soon also tell you more about when we drive the car, how that one plays out. So far, it also looks quite close here with 1m86 or 6 foot one. I'll soon close the roof and see how that one plays out. Then. Also, this whole middle console you can see is very voluminous also on its inside part. It really splits driver and co-driver. So, although it's a rather big car you don't have much room to move around here they more set the tone to a sporty interior which really cages you in just a little bit the steering wheel can be controlled right here electric and good thing is that they really include a lot of extra equipment you know like just one infotainment system size and so on also the gps is included well for that price you start below 100,000 euro with the 8 series, but it surely goes easily above that uh, euros or dollars and you can spend even more. So yeah, they're really expensive, but that was also the segment they were actually aiming for. So what about that roof? See at the moment when the car is not powered, nothing is happening. Sometimes with vehicles you can turn on the ignition and then it works, but so far Let's see, pressing the brake pedal, then it does work. Always a safety mechanism. Now we close it once again. Whoa, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think that does work. So, it looks closer when the car is open as it would be. So, here we go. And that still leaves some headroom. And I have the seat in the lowest position indeed. So you do get along here with two tall adults, that's no problem. But it's not the best package, that's clear. Will I fit in this back here when I remove the wind deflector? Hmm, let's see about that. But first of all, let's finish all the gauges, everything you can, con con can do and control the car. Interior overview, again with this big split here with the middle console. The climate unit is still manual to control where it has the digital screen, but it's really good that we don't have to go to the infotainment system. That's really cool. This button here, by the way, is that you can individually set all of the in, uh, assistant systems in the infotainment system. So that's, for example, good if you want to um, you know, deactivate the steering intervention of the lane departure warning, for example. Soon more details to this touchscreen infotainment system can also have a metal knurling knob right there. It's an interesting quality detail. It's cool. Then those hotkeys, you can set different, you know, like a, like a home address to those hotkeys. The steering wheel again, it has, always when it comes as an M steering wheel, a little bit strange form because it's a little bit thicker in this top part. This voice activation, you can either activate here at the steering wheel or you can also say, hey BMW, Drive me to Lisbon. I've selected Lisbon. Say, 
add as intermediate destination or so and now we're going to lisbon also works with setting the temperature and i've been using it you know for a longer time now in the x7 and the in the x5 and i'm quite satisfied with it because it really saves you time especially putting in destinations sometimes you have to repeat you know two or three times some sometimes that really gets what you mean but then it's still faster than typing in the address digital instruments soon more deals to that left side you set the cruise control but also the um, assistant driving mode if you go a little bit further than cruise control we see more about it when driving the vehicle very soon again all what you touch and feel they really stepped up the game right there they're not lagging behind anymore in interior build quality what was the case like you know a couple of years ago with bmw then let's go further down in the middle console with this shiny wood service. I rather prefer matte wood ser services because they don't gather fingerprints. Lower part, then you have this inductive charging platform next to a normal USB socket and some in in, um, adaptive cup holders. <laughs> inductive charging pad, adaptive cup holders. Then this crystal shifting lever you can get for the 8 series together with the fitting one for the turning and pressing knob so the infotainment system can also be controlled right there. And then there's also a neck heating available that is giving you some hot air out of the neck area. I'm not so sure if it's the most important function. My wife loves, loves it definitely but I think, you know, when it's winter time, you wear a jacket anyway. And when it's warm, it's warm enough anyway. <laughs> so I'm not so sure about that. And then we have this split opening for the armrest. Then they have a USB-C and some 12 foot power supply in there. In the infotainment system, you can now also access those experience modes. You can also call them with the Hey BMW function. And then go for, for example, well-being, then ambient light, seat heating is activated. And the temperature also being you know raised a little bit so different experience modes depending on you know what you're seeking for the rest of the entertainment system is something a little bit complicated in the menu structure but i can tell you you can connect your phone via bluetooth but also with the wireless apple carplay sometimes it also takes a while to connect it that's the downside on it but then you got it connected then the map here you can also use it with zoom and pinch pretty responsive great from the overview and the you know just the root guidance is one of the best in the industry at the moment it's really clear and you hardly ever miss something and then there's also a camera system available let me put on the engine for that oh brum brum. so here we go this is for example then the rear view camera you can also switch them around just a little bit here, for example, the camera picture, brightness and contrast, and manage points. So, the instruments are all digital, and when we turn on the car, there we go, and camera magician Jonas also hits the throttle, then you can see that the RPMs <laughs> go on counterclockwise, and the speed would be going clockwise. In the middle part, you can then see some GPS interaction. And the head-up display is also standard. You can see the speed, the allowed speed, and also some GPS commands there. Really great in your line of sight. It's a great addition and it also adds to safety. This wind deflector here is really effective, like those. Well, the Porsche 911 convertible has an electric one that really goes out here and then actually flips out and looks almost like this. This one is... Uh, probably my favorite one other than that those classic ones they really do a good job and if you lift them up like this you can even do it with one hand here even when holding a microphone and by the way yes it still has a reason that we use those big microphones they deliver best sound quality and no background noise you at the moment don't hear them well here we go that's it pretty cool quality as well and then we can take a look at those rear seats and you can already see from here it's not really possible to get there in the back. It doesn't really make sense. If you look at it, I mean, how much leg room there is actually left. And I've even set the co-driver seat to a position right there. If you take a look right there. So I could still sit on the co-driver seat here at the moment. Then I would have a little bit more leg room. But even that would not fit. Still, I'll get inside. I'll try. 
you can use it you know with the isofix for example for child seats or just you know for the luggage compartment you see the seat is sliding forward just a little bit but even in the most forward position it's really not much luck for me so i think these those are really just emergency seats and yeah this is, now it would slide backward and oh, 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 <laughs> yeah I'm all I'm all doing this for you guys just doing this for you so in this way you know I think only a dwarf anymore could be the driver right there so yeah I think it's not really usable for adults here in the rear um, it will fit for, as for the roof headroom wise I can show you that well uh, as well let's do that but legroom wise no hmm yeah doesn't look that good, right? <laughs> so, yeah, also the headroom does not really work here. Um, but what I like is that the seat belts have the M colors. Yay! So, what about the couple's weekend or Friday evening trip to Pismo Beach? What about some luggage? So, let's see. Electric opening. Well, it is of course somewhat limited. It's a convertible. That setup here would be that you could actually open the roof at the moment. Then you're, of course, even more limited. If you want more luggage room, then you flip that up. Now you cannot open the roof, but you have some more space right there. The capacity figure for that one is 350 liters. And let me show you some measurements in length that's actually quite reasonable this is one meters and ten and in width in the lower area this one is just 80 centimeters that's what you have and in height right there is about four a little bit more than 40 centimeters but that's again only when you cannot open the roof anymore <laughs> Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge here with the BMW 8 Series Cabriolet. And we start with a closed top because I want to tell you something about this insulated roof. This has actually several layers for the insulation. It comes as standard. It's not like we know, for example, from, from some Audi convertibles that they have uh, that just as an option. This one here is the standard one. So standard equipment is that you get this soundproof roof but yes again it's a very expensive vehicle and bmw claims it would reach equal db sound levels on the interior as the coupe hmm that's a very strong claim and i mean so far here it really sounds very silent you know, those passing cars and so on and i don't have to raise my voice that much so indeed it is reasonably silent difference in the feeling from the coupe would be that this whole area here because you know this is just a little bit more freely designed in the convertible feels a little bit more open a little bit more spacious a little bit more airy and leaves a little bit more light in there other than that both cars indeed feel somewhat similar the driving here on let's say normal city driving road and heading towards the countryside we'll also go to some sportier corners very soon this suspension can make it comfortable there's actually no problem because it is an adaptive suspension and as you know as long as you are in a normal comfortable mode this is also no problem so that does work however there's hardly any tilting also due to this anti-tilt control so the car really keeps it upright and also the rear axle steering helps you when for example you know, parking in and out and well here for example it's good that we do those live tests on auto fuel due to the sunlight i really did not see this hump in the road it was not too fierce but the suspension did a great job in this case and i want to get to some more speed now again 
after the next intersection because I then want to show you how to open the roof while driving here. So we go straight. I always love that you can very well see cars. So that might be an argument when you talk to your wife or so and say, I need to get this convertible because it's safer. There's no B pillar I can see when people are coming from the side. That's a good argument, isn't it? So, and now, driving about 30 kilometers an hour, as I said, it goes up to 50, and then we can also open that roof. We also had some fans right there. And maybe you're hearing it on camera now. There's a big difference, of course, to driving with the open top, and that made us once more realize how silent it actually was to drive with a closed roof. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, in those um, narrow city street situations, of course, you feel that you have a bigger car. So in that respect, it somehow does make sense to go for a mid-size convertible. You have to decide that on your own. I mean, the thing is, if you live in the US, for example, which is also one of the core markets for this one, you have wider roads and if you park in front of Whole Foods, you have no problem to find a parking space. So that is then okay actually to have a very big vehicle but other than that in europe it might be a problem and then some mid-size convertibles might make more sense for example here <laughs> in this portuguese traffic this is where you sometimes get a little bit nervous than if you have for european taste a rather big vehicle and now we'll make our way out of this traffic and go to some very nice sporty winding routes of course, then with open top. Now we're out here for you in the countryside and we're approaching next really, really fun corners. Before we will have just fun the rest of the day, let me just tell you something about consumption of this V8. And you always have to calculate that it was the same also in the X7 and it's not too different here in those sporty cars. About 14 liters on one kilometer, so about 17 mpg US, 20 mpg UK. That's just what it takes. If you want a more efficient car, then go for the probably the rear wheel driven petrol engine. And of course, well, the inline six cylinder diesel, that one is a really amazing engine. Although I'm not predominantly the most enthusiastic diesel fan, the BMW six-cylinder diesel is very, very economical. Yeah, so that's as for consumption. And for assistant systems, we have a blind spot monitor here in the side mirrors, and we also have an adaptive cruise control which works really flawlessly. And it also has this active lane keeping assist mode so you see it keeps me in the lane automatically you should keep your hands at the steering wheel all the time and if you are in the US for example you can still use this automatic lane changing assist system but it's not allowed in Europe anymore but definitely great assistance systems they work really flawlessly now we're getting on the road I was mentioning earlier. And so far we've been driving in a comfort mode. This adaptive suspension is really cool. So you're not missing an air suspension. The suspension that BMW puts in here is really very comfortable. At the same time, it's pretty sporty. So they have mastered a great compromise. And together with the rear axis steering and the anti-tilt control, really gives you a great driving feeling. So awesome job as for the suspension. I really like that. So see here, hardly any body roll. When I get to some speed soon, you'll see that even more. Really cool. And especially at lower speeds, this rear axle steering gives you more agility while driving. Also helps you in a turning circle. You have to be, you know, it still has a wide turning circle so I um, have to be aware of that and also when you approach some ramps or so you have to drive very very slowly that you don't scratch the lower front of the car 
it's really prone, you know, when you go to down the ramp, then it's going straight again. Go slowly. <laughs> I heard a, a couple of scratches here today from um, from other journalists, so um, I'm saying, oh, you should better uh, pay attention to those. So in the comfort mode, by the way, you hardly hear anything big from the exhaust note, note right there. It's rather for comfortable cruising, and that's really, with this suspension, really well feasible. However, Jonas and I, we are both quite tall, and we are not that satisfied with the long-term seating comfort of those seats here. So that should have been improved. You have a lot of room, a lot of length in this very car. Actually, it should be able to deliver some more seating comfort here. So, suspension grade, seating comfort should be a little bit more increased. Now, let's go to the sport mode where the gears are turned up higher. We also hear more from this exhaust note, especially because, oh, there's a pedestrian on the road, but after the pedestrian, I probably will pass. You shall not pass. But probably now, but there's in the corner coming up. Ah, it's always tricky. Wow. That's a classic here in front of us, right? No. Uh, about 100 kilometers or 60 miles, you can easily drive with open top. So when you have all the windows up, that's easily to sustain also as for wind noise and also the wind that is coming into the cabin. So this is really an all-season convertible, no problem also when driving in a little bit colder weather this will be. This is pretty cool and those roads here are not that good. So as for the surface, I mean, and this suspension is again doing a phenomenal job. Really, the suspension is the one I like best with the car and well, the earlier claim was that they could really set up the suspension for this very vehicle because they just only offer one single suspension for that car. and. I can tell you, well done BMW engineers, they really mastered that task and it was obviously a very good decision. Also a good feeling from the steering wheel, especially in the corners. Um, the dead zone here in the center part is somewhat limited, that's still okay, it could be a little bit better, but then as soon as you turn a little bit more, it really gives you good feeling in the corners and considering again it's rather a long and heavy car, this feels quite agile, especially as for, you know, we got this rear axle steering that's helping us with that, then also the anti-tilt control. And here in the countryside, this is also where this car is really at home. You have, you know, good wind features, as I said, car is not pushing too much over the front axle. Yes, somewhat you feel the weight and a smaller convertible would be, of course, lighter and a little bit more agile to drive. So this one here is primarily set for cruising and then secondary for fun winding roads like those. Not for the racetrack, we've been driving the 8 Series Coupe on the racetrack, if you've seen that review, and that really showed that this car was not suitable for that because it's just not sporty enough and it's too heavy as for this purpose. So I cannot recommend it for the racetrack, but cruising and enjoying and then of course here with a little sportier note yeah that's really a lot of fun and then we have this v8 roll as well although it's not too loud even though we have the roof all opened so and i think you can pick up at camera that um i can actually quite you know drive quite fast with this vehicle without fighting it too much but i definitely do feel the weight so if you want something more agile, something more spontaneous, more driver focused, then you should rather go in a roadster or a mid-size convertible segment, but not in those bigger convertible segments, which are more for you now enjoying and cruising. But somehow it's, it's a very special feeling because I feel I'm driving a heavy and long car, but then in those corners here, especially with the rear axle steering that is helping me then to um, maintain composure. That's really interesting. And again, this fantastic suspension and together with the steering play right there. This is actually pretty cool. Hope you also enjoy this great countryside routes together with me. 
Although they're also quite small and sometimes quite bumpy and not that good as for the tarmac surface. So I always have to pay attention to those. Wow. Really, really cool. What do you think, guys? So, that turbo is still cooling down a little bit, I hear, you know, probably hear that uh, roaring sound still. Well, about our conclusion for today with the 8 Series Cabriolet. It is a design object, very beautiful design, I think both in the front and in the rear and timeless in the side profile. It's a pretty long stretch, but that's also why the proportions really work that well. On the interior you see a great build quality, here in this case. BMW has quite often that problem still, that they lack some animal skin alternatives in the interior. That's the downside of that. And also I found the package quite bad, so you have a, you know, now the turbo is finished cooling down. <laughs> so you don't have too much room on the interior, although it's already quite a big car. And also the driving comfort is, of course, okay, but we have to rate this 100,000 euro or dollar car, of course, at a very high niveau. And so we can all say that the seating comfort for tall people should be a little bit better. The best about this vehicle is the suspension. Awesome job, you do not miss any air suspension. This adaptive M suspension has really been set out for this very vehicle for the whole 8 series. It is doing a great job both in comfort and also in sportiness. That was really an awesome ride. You have some good cruising features. The um, adaptive assistance systems are really cool. For example, also the lane keeping assist. Being tested in the same system in the X5 and also in the X7. You should check out our reviews from the US right there. Really well done as for this respect. And driving wise, I mean, it cannot deny its heaviness, its weight and also its length. So it's not um, a car that you would take out on the racetrack or you would say, you know, you hunt the next corners every day. It's more for cruising, taking on the highway number one, for example, open top and just pure enjoyment for that. And then for some sporty elements, I've shown you that here just, it is somewhat also cool to do it. Yeah, you know, after a while, again, you feel the weight of the vehicle, but still together then with the anti-tilt control, with the rear axle steering and this great suspension, you could score some decent speeds also in those winding corner roads. And again, hardly felt that the timing was rough, hardly felt that there was a lot of bumps in the road. Again, evened out by this world-class suspension. So here we present you again a lot of pros and cons. That's what we do about all cars, being as authentic as possible. I hope you really appreciate that here in Autogofuel and please also join us next time and don't forget to recommend us. Thank you so much for tuning in.